recall, back in 1968, when with the very best of intentions, the previous administration entered into a bombing halt of North Vietnam. And everybody thought we were going to have peace now, but we didn't have it down. We didn't have it understood. We're not going to make that mistake again. We are going to have the kind of agreement which will end this war and build the foundation for a lasting peace that we can enjoy in that part of the world and all over the world. And that kind of a peace, my friend, and let us understand what the issue is, and this is the basic difference between the two candidates, I say it shall be peace with honor and not peace with surrender for the United States of America. It is vitally important that the President of the United States never be sent to the bargaining table with another country as the head of the second strongest nation in the world. We must remember that strength for the United States is vitally important to world peace. I know there are those who say that we can cut our defenses so that we have the second strongest Navy and the second strongest Air Force and the second strongest Army, and that doesn't really make any difference. But let me tell you, the day that happens, Peace and freedom will be in deadly jeopardy throughout the world. Let me say, keep America strong so that the President of the United States will represent a strong America and not a weak America. Today's average American has more of just about everything than did his counterpart of a decade or a generation ago. More automobiles, more appliances, more clothes, more furniture, more possessions. This is a reflection, of course, of the tremendous strengths inherent in the American free enterprise system. Yes, and even more time to devote to being uncouth and rude. 